Hello, my dear friends, I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. Today, I'm going to be discussing a very interesting topic with you. I would describe it as if you have a dissertation, you can probably get a green card to the United States of America. So let's dive in on that. This is a very interesting topic, especially for those of you who are uh, academic people, who are in science uh, and technology. Let's go. All right, so basically today we're going to be discussing visa EB1A, uh, the visa for extraordinary people. And, uh, and you guys know that you don't have to be a Nobel Prize winner or the Olympic champion to get a green card in this category. All you need to do is to satisfy at least three criteria out of the ten. I have a lot of cases for engineers, for IT people, for psychologists. I have a case for a hypnotherapist. I just got an approval for a psychologist uh, and a lot of other cases where there is some science or academic work involved. And of course, I'm not going to be again going through the, all the criteria for this visa. You can watch my other videos where I discuss in depth each criteria separately. Here's a little tip for those of you who have a dissertation. What is dissertation? It's a long scientific or academic piece of work and analysis that is based on original research. So why am I talking about a dissertation basically being your gate to the green card? Well, let's let's discuss this topic. This I think this is really cool for, for you to know this, um, this type of insight from the uh, immigration field to the States. If you have a dissertation, that means that you've done some original research and very likely that original research has some impact to the field of your research because you cannot publish this dissertation, you cannot have it uh, approved by the committee, by the, other, by the group of other scientists. If it's not a part important, then you don't have a dissertation, right? You have a drafted work, but it's not a dissertation in, in the way that I'm discussing it. If that's the way, that means that we can already close at least one criteria, your original contribution into the field. I've never seen a person who created, who drafted the dissertation, who didn't draft at least 10, maybe 20 other publications that are pre-classification and before you can write your uh, dissertation. Of course, you have at least 10 publications minimum and a lot of you with the dissertation have many, many more. I had one client uh, from Ukraine, she's an English linguist. So she had about, she had a dissertation, but she had about a hundred of other publications. That's probably too much, but uh, 10 would be more than enough. So having another 10 publications, we can close another criteria, which is academic articles of your own. We already have two criteria satisfied. Let's go further. You have publications and you have original dissertation. Because you just don't write those things overnight, you probably work for university, a college, a lab, some analytical organization that do some research, or you work in a company that has some kind of uh, reputation in the field. Probably through that, we can satisfy another criterion, which is called a critical or leading role in a distinguished organization. This is already three criteria and voila, you already have a very good basis for filing for EB1A visa, the green card for a talented a scientist, a engineer, technologist, maybe IT person, maybe mathematician, whatever that is. But don't be discouraged if you're not in the STEM category and STEM is a science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I had one um, clothes designer who also wrote a dissertation. I had another model who wrote a dissertation. So I love my clients. You blow my mind how talented you are, how many achievements you have, and you make me better every day. So that's why I love what I'm doing. So, but let's move on in the academic field. You already have a dissertation, you have publication, and you work in some uh, university college, some educational uh, uh, organization, or maybe in some scientific organization, Lord knows. And you probably do, because you don't do publications, dissertations just for fun, right? You do it to 
push the progress to to bring the evolution to our society and a lot of you who do this who are involved in this type of job in this type of work you get a pretty good salary especially if you're working in the western world uh, but uh, uh, in all other countries that's that's good enough your salary has to be significantly more the salary of similar professionals in the field how much is significant well there is a case law that says that 20 to 30 percent is good enough but if you have 50 percent or twice as much this is even better right off the bat we have four criteria for you satisfied and we didn't even go in a hardcore deep analysis of your petition a lot of you go to the conferences and deliver speeches and uh, talk about your articles and get publications after those uh, conferences that could satisfy the awards and prizes in the fields if you have that you already have, have five criteria satisfied. And maybe some of you have the major press covering your inventions, your scientific work, your educational work, your IT work, whatever that, that is in the, uh, in the press, right? It could be a major press, it could be a field press, the specialized the press that covers, that writes uh, things only for professionals in your field. If that's so, you satisfy already six criteria and maybe even some of you are members of professional organizations who accept the people only those who have outstanding high achievements in the field and you probably one of those so with a scientist to have seven criteria is really not that hard and as a cherry on the top you can also be judge or a juror or a, you may call it a referee of the work of others. So, for example, it differs from country to country, but a lot of times if you are defending your dissertation when you're presenting it to the commission to other scientists, you got to have an opponent, right? It's like think of it as a, as a trial. You have a lawyer and you have a prosecutor. So each one is trying to present their case. When you defend your dissertation, you may have an opponent. So you can be that opponent or you can be a person in that commission who listens and make an assessment of the dissertation. You can be on the editor board or some journal or some magazine and then that cherry on top is the eighth criterion, the judging the work of others. Isn't it great guys? And I think some of you just shocked right now because just five minutes ago you didn't know you can get a green card to the states but now you do. Okay so two things guys. First if you think that this video was valuable to you, if you got some value out of it, smash that like button. Smash it as hard as you can. See those rainbows coming out of that uh, little symbol that will give me some love, right? That means that I do some good job and I bring you value. Number two, if you think that you satisfy at least three out of the eight that I mentioned, that means you have to go down below this video and fill out the questionnaire that I prepared special for you so I could give you a free analysis, a free evaluation of your case. Make sure you do this because other attorneys want you to pay them $300 and call it a consultation to do the same thing as you can get here for free. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to my Instagram and to my TikTok. The links are down below this video. So we are up to date on what's going on with the immigration. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, the lawyer of your future. Your future begins here. Good luck.